so I'm here to speak to you about the uh, Pioneer Heart Failure Trial. We uh, began this program in 2014 uh, as we learned about the exciting results of the Paradigm Heart Failure Trial, which was done in chronic outpatients uh, um, and reported that secretal valsartan led to a reduction in, in outcomes compared to nalapril in chronic outpatients with heart failure. Uh, we noted that there were uh, that patients with acutely compensated heart failure had been excluded from that trial. And in fact, patients had to, uh, uh, who were enrolled had to not only be on stable heart failure, heart failure therapy before they were enrolled, but had to uh, be able to tolerate sequential uh, single blind periods of high dose secretal valsartan and enalapril prior to being enrolled into that trial. Knowing that acute heart failure is the most common cause of of hospitalizations for patients in the US uh, over the age of 65 and has substantial morbidity and mortality associated with it, we were wondering whether this uh, uh, therapy could be of value to that population which had not been previously studied. And we embarked on the Pioneer Heart Failure Trial, which started enrollment in May of 2016 and completed enrollment just this year in May. It was an eight-week study that uh, looked at uh, comparing uh, Secubril Valsartan versus Enalapril in patients who were in hospital, admitted with acute heart failure, and had reduced ejection fraction and high levels of natriuretic peptides, so they were at high risk. Uh, and we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't have many exclusion criteria for prior heart failure or prior use of angiotensin receptor blockers or ACE inhibitors. In fact, uh, the patients we enrolled, 52% of them had never been on an ACE or an ARB. And, uh, and nearly 40% of the patients had no prior history of heart failure, and in fact, that hospitalization was uh, the first diagnosis of heart failure. And so we enrolled 881 patients, 440 were randomized uh, to securo valsartan, 441 were randomized to enalapril. And we uh, initiated study drug in hospital, and then uh, followed them for eight weeks for a primary endpoint of NT pro BMP reduction. Uh, as well as looking very importantly at safety of initiation of these drugs in hospital and, uh, and also clinical outcomes out to eight weeks. It's important to note that while we take care of many patients uh, in hospital with acute heart failure, therapy for acute heart failure really hasn't changed dramatically in, in over uh, three or four decades. We're still uh, very dependent on using decongestive therapy with intravenous diuretics and vasodilators as needed for hemodynamic stability. And uh, although many programs have tried to improve outcomes uh, in patients with acute heart failure, uh, to date, guidelines don't uh, uh, mandate anything beyond uh, uh, volume management as well as hemodynamic stabilization, with a goal that eventually patients should, if they remain, have chronic heart failure, should be started on guideline-directed therapies for chronic heart failure. So this is a, a new uh, arena uh, for this drug, as well as there's very limited uh, uh, guideline-directed medical therapies that are disease-modifying that can be started in hospital with, with this and have substantial evidence uh, of a benefit. So getting to the results, um, we were able to show that in both groups, uh, both the enalapril and pseudovalsartan group uh, started in hospital, there was a reduction in nt pro -BMP. The enalapril group uh, had a reduction of 25%, and uh, the secretal valsartan group had a 47.5% reduction, which, is a prox which was a relative risk reduction of about 29% that was uh, substantially statistically significant in favor of a benefit out to eight weeks for secretal valsartan. Interestingly, we saw this effect that's starting uh, really at week one, and as a side note, uh, our design uh, m made it so that patients who were assigned to Nalpril started study drug right away, while patients who were assigned to Valsartan actually had two doses of placebo before they started active study drug. That was just to allow some washout just in case they had been on prior ACE or an ARB and not change or uh, impact the blind. We looked, uh, one of the most important parts of our program was to look at the safety and tolerability of these drugs. Uh, there's not actually a lot known about that in, from randomized trials uh, of, of any drug in the acute heart failure uh, uh, setting. And what we found was that uh, 
there was no difference in, in statistically uh, in rates of symptomatic hypertension, hyperkalemia, or uh, uh, worsening renal function. There was also no statistical significance in rates of angioedema. But interestingly, uh, angioedema, the numerical number of angioedema events was uh, higher in the analypal group uh, with six patients, uh, all black patients, interestingly, and uh, three of us started only having one event, which was in a white patient. And that's interesting because both ACE inhibitors and, and in, the, in prior uh, drug formulations, uh, angiotensin receptor and epilysin inhibitors, of which the crew of Lassardin is one, uh, uh, have been felt to ha be at risk for angioedema. So the fact that it was uh, uh, not different statistically and there was a numerical advantage in favor of Secure in terms of safety is notable. Um, the, uh, then looking at the uh, exploratory clinical outcomes, we were able to show that uh, there was a uh, absolute risk reduction in favor of Secure Valsardin that mirrored the biomarker results that we saw. That absolute risk reduction was seven and a half percent uh, reduction in a serious composite, uh, which included death, rehospitalization for heart failure, listing for transplant, or implantation of a left ventricular assist device. This re represents a 46% relative risk reduction in favor of cerebrovalsardin. Uh, with regards to the 12 subgroups that we looked at to see if there was any heterogeneity in the effect of, uh, in favor of cerebrovalsardin, we found no, none, uh, no uh, significant interactions with any key subgroups. Uh, and with, e with either the primary efficacy endpoint, which is the biomarker anti pro BMP, or the clinical outcome, or in fact safety. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, uh, the, so the take home uh, from that was that uh, that cerebrovalsarin can be initiated safely using a blood pressure treatment algorithm that we've put out in our paper, uh, uh, that it works in patients regardless of prior heart failure diagnosis regardless of blood pressure or EF at, at entry, and pr regardless of uh, prior ACE or ARB use, and that the impact is not only in terms of the biomarker effect, but it translated in a very short period of time of eight weeks into a clinically relevant change in outcomes. Uh, we think these uh, results will, in fact, lead to uh, implications for clinical care in the fact that now that we have evidence from the in-hospital period with this drug, Scutal Valsardin, uh, coupled with the evidence that was published many now several years back from the Paradigm Heart Failure Trial in a different population, but in outpatients uh, uh, with chronic heart failure, that this really should, in fact, uh, I think, spell a new day for treatment of, of heart failure from hospital setting throughout to the, through the outpatient, and that uh, I suspect Scutal Valsardin should become the go-to drug uh, 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 to reduce outcomes in that population.